I tell you, this government is falling apart at the seams. Anthony Albanese today said something that staggered me. And I wonder now, again, does he have any clue how this economy works? New growth figures tomorrow. They're predicted to confirm our economy is barely growing now. In fact, that we're getting even poorer per person under this government. The fall in our disposable income is now the worst in the developed world. But Albanese today seemed unaware of just how badly we're going compared to the rest of the developed world when it comes to inflation. He made out that, oh no, it's the rest of the world that's to blame for that. That inflation was probably worse. This is the implication he gave. Worse in other developed countries. And I know people are doing it tough. I also know that this isn't unique to Australia, that global inflation has had an impact. And in many parts of the world, including whether it be big economies like the UK or smaller economies in our region like Palau, they hit double digit inflation. I know that interest rates in Canada, New Zealand, uh, UK, uh, in these countries uh, were much higher, peaked higher. Uh, than uh, the 4.35 per cent that interest rates have risen to here. I mean, who's this man trying to fool? However bad inflation once was in other economies like ours, like the UK, we're now doing worse than most under this government and we're getting poorer. Joining me every Tuesday is National Senator Matt Canavan, the former Resources Minister. Uh, Matt, it now looks, you know, given that we are getting so much poorer per person, inflation is worse than most of our competitors, including the UK. It now looks even crazier, I think, to see this government cancelling a $1 billion gold mine because of secret Aboriginal business told by people that the traditional owners say are wrong about that. Plus, of course, wasting tens and tens of billions of dollars on crazy energy schemes, green ones that keep falling over. No rational government would do what this government is doing. So what do you think is driving this? Well, Andrew, I think it's a combination of uh, pig-headedness and politics. Uh, the pig-headedness here is that the Labor Party obviously signed up uh, its, uh, its future to a, a green energy uh, uh, fantasy. Uh, and it's uh, loathe to move away from that track, even though all the evidence is, is building up. Uh, uh, their investment in weather-dependent renewables is doing nothing but make our electricity system much more vulnerable and the price of power for everybody much more expensive. So they're just stubborn, just simple and utter stubbornness to continue down this path against all of the evidence uh, against it. Uh, and then the other aspect here is politics, and that's where that gold mine comes in. Clearly, Tanya Plibersek, I think there is a secret reason why Tanya Plibersek stopped that mine. Uh, it's that she needs green preferences uh, in her seat of Sydney to stay in a job. Uh, so she is comfortable with putting at risk and, and stopping 800 jobs being created far from her electorate uh, to satisfy the green activists who wanted this mine shut. That is what's going on here. And the consequence for all of us then is that lower standard of living. We actually have had our standard of living fall to levels we hadn't seen since 2011. Uh, so more than 10 years backwards we've gone in just the two years of this Labor government. That's never happened in recorded economic history, that kind of reduction, such a short space of time. That's why people are angry and that's why people are scratching their heads and wondering why do we have, after we've gone back, our, our standard of living has gone back more than a decade, why do we have a government stopping projects that could employ 800 people, that could boost our productivity and lift our wealth? It is totally inexplicable, as you say, except if you think that the Labor Party is doing this for their own narrow political interests rather than the broader national interests and what we need right now. Matt, I actually think that, you know, there's a broader story here that um, a bit like uh, France before the French Revolution, you know, we, we've gone from an age of reason to an age of feelings. This is a government captured by finer feelings and impervious to things like evidence and reason. Um, can I just ask, going back to the, uh, the top of the show, how come the opposition is not criticising the head of ASIO for first saying it let in even Hamas supporters, rhetorical supporters, and now saying that people who heard him say exactly that are actually distorting his words. All I hear is he's a good bloke and won't criticise his ASIO. Why not? Uh, well, Andrew, I have criticised him and I've just texted you my comments while I heard your show, so you can check that later, But uh, uh, so that I'm not just repeating it now. <laughs> I said to Peter Stevanovich on Sky News, you should always watch Sky News, of course. I, I was uh, on his show this morning and, and immediately criticised Mr Burgess because you're absolutely, absolutely right what you said. I mean, look, uh, I mean, I'm glad. I'm glad he's now saying that supporting a terrorist organisation is a red flag. 
to coming into this country. Uh, it's surprising it took so long to, as in his words, clarify that statement. But Mr Burgess didn't clarify his statement. He's backflipped on his statement. Just be honest with us. That would be better. I've got nothing against the bloke personally. Uh, uh, he seems like he does a good job. But he's stuffed up in this instance. Just admit that and take your medicine and let's all move on. And I'm sick and tired, Andrew, of this culture that's emerged, I think, in recent times where uh, some of the highest paid people among us, that is our the senior bureaucratic leadership, are somehow a protected species and are exempt from any criticism. I mean, it, it's like if you do dare criticise these, these mandarins uh, earning multiple times the rest of us, if you criticise this, you're breaking some gospel rule. Uh, I mean, they're just human beings and they need to be accountable. They should be, uh, they should be subject to more criticism than anyone else in our society because they receive taxpayer dollars in a privileged position and under our system... Uh, they absolutely should be subject to criticism through the parliament, through elected officials. And when they make the wrong decision, as Mike had clearly done here a few weeks ago, they need to be held to account.